Patrick, thank you so much for coming on the Easy Prey podcast today. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. So can you give myself and the audience a little bit of background about who you are and what you do? Sure. I'm the Chief Technology Officer for um, Identity IQ. Um, we are a company that specializes in providing identity theft prevention and recovery services out to our, our member base, um, which, you know, which can span across a number of different sort of areas within that within the, the, that tool set. Um, personally, I've, I've been um, involved in a number of different industries sort of that are exposed to this arena um, in banking and mortgage and in some other industries. Um, and that kind of exposure sort of, you know, um, and some particular exposures I had within my family brought the subject of identity theft um, and the kind of the, the growing concern that it is nationally uh, to my attention. And then um, just through a personal contact at uh, Identity IQ, we, we expanded the conversation and I was fortunate enough to be able to find a position over here to come and help out. That's awesome. So let's, uh, let's define a few terms uh, because often it, uh, I hear things like in commercials that they, they say are identity theft and I'm like, well, I, I don't know if that really is identity theft, at least in my mind. So let's talk about what, what do you got, what do you consider, what are the kind of the elements of identity theft? Sure. Um, so the, the, the real challenge there is, is that we are putting more and more of our personal information out there online. Um, we're putting our date of birth online. We're putting information that can lead people to figure out, you know, where we live. We we're, we're looking, we're, we've got our address information and as more and more sites that we are subscribing to are containing and hosting this information, we, we are finding that both publicly acknowledged breaches and breaches that aren't necessarily publicly acknowledged um, are getting that data into the hands of people who are trying to use it in order to pretend to be you for the purposes of um, getting access to credit, getting access to loans, getting access to um, you know, um, credit cards or new phones or, or other things that they can purchase in your name and leave you exposed. So when we talk about identity theft prevention, what we're really talking about is, is spotting the scenarios where someone's gotten a hold of that information and is now using that information to try to, um, you know, obtain for themselves something in your name. Uh, usually, obviously, financial is the, the key thing that we're trying to get there. So would you consider uh, someone finding credit card data on the web and using you know, a card that's been issued in my name by me intentionally, but they get the card number and use it. Do you consider that identity theft or is that just kind of credit fraud? It's, it, it, I suppose it could be credit fraud, but it could also be used as, as a scenario where that, that credit card number can be used to authenticate you somewhere else. So I guess it depends on how, it, how it's used, but either way, you're in a scenario where someone ha has, you know, utilized some aspect of your identity to, you know, get access to, to purchase things in your name or to, you know, uh, open credit credit lines in your name, and, and you know, oftentimes you can use a credit card number as a uh, as an identification mechanism, or you can use it to open up another credit card, or you can use it for these other types of things that can can secure it. In general, we think of someone's got your credit card and is spending money as being just credit card fraud, and yeah. you know, Visa and Mastercard have programs for that. But but it, it does kind of there is some crossover in there, and there can be some some bleed in. Yeah, I always. I always cringe a little bit when I hear credit card yeah. fraud being considered identity theft because it's yeah. like, well, that's opportunistic. They don't really know who I am or know right. anything about me. It's just a credit card number that they're just trying to use and sure, yeah, and that sort of thing. Yeah. So let's kind of cover the the basics here. So how does uh, identity theft actually happen? What are kind of the elements of that? Oh, there's a there's a, there's there's Every, every day there's more kind of approaches and, and different mechanisms that people are using. We find things from everything from somebody um, getting hold of you know, your name and address and then submitting a, a, a change of address in your name and redirecting credit, credit offers to a PO box and using those credit card offers to open a credit card in your name and get approval. We see things like, um, you know, uh, like a, a sit and swap, somebody gets access to information that maybe you use to, you know, your, your security questions that you put on Facebook, somebody gets a hold of that or gets into your Instagram account and gets those. And maybe you then calls your phone provider and says, Hey, I want you to switch my phone over to this other SIM card. And now they've got text messages coming in 
that they can use to authenticate your themselves at your at your bank or at your credit card company. We see things, um, you know, like just um, getting a, enough basic information about you, social security number, name, address, date of birth, you know, getting those types of pieces of information can enable someone to open loans in your name, to apply for credit in your name, to buy, buy a car, buy a phone, you know, things like that. So there's, there's, a, there's just a wide variety of different approaches and tactics that people are using. And, and every day there seems to be a new one. <laughs> so, so speaking of new ones, what are kind of those emerging trends? Where do you see things becoming less common and where do you kind of see things going? Sim swaps a new fun one. So um, I've, I've had a, a family member pretty recently get exposed to this. And that's what I mentioned before, where somebody you know, managed to convince the phone company to change your phone number, uh, to change your, your phone uh, number to, to redirect to a different SIM card. And as I said, that as more and more of us are using multi-factor authentication in our lives and text messages are a common mechanism for that, we find that you, know, you get things like uh, PayPal um, has now a, uh, um, like a one-time code that they'll send you via text message. So I don't even have to know the password. I don't even have to any clue what the password is. You go to, to, to PayPal, I've had your phone number redirected to my SIM card. Um, I can log in and start purchasing things via PayPal in your name. Hmm. So um, things like that are, are kind of emerging out. Um, you know, there's all the traditional ones of, you know, you know, that we know about of lists. And I'm, I'm sure you talk about this on your podcast all the time. You know, there's, there's dark web lists that go around of like some hacks that were like 10 years old where your information's out there. So if you, if you're, uh, you know, not one of those people who changes your password, changes your usernames off, and those can still be kind of recycled, but, but there's a lot of, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a challenge to keep up with them, but it's something that's kind of, Sort of fascinating and, and something that's kind of uh, rewarding to be able to kind of go out and and you know um, you know be able to provide a service out there that's helping people um, a be aware of when this is happening to them and 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 b if in the worst case scenario where someone is successful you know we can see a cascade happen sometimes of like I've I've gotten into the sim swaps a great one it's the it's the entry point for somebody to, to be able to go capture you know identity. Um, in several different sites. Mm -hmm. So once those things start happening, once the first one falls, you know, you can use those, those same techniques across multiple different exploits to, to get more and more data. So um, being able to provide a, a service where we can help people navigate through that, get recovered, get, get things locked down so that their, their exposure is minimized and then help them work with those credit bureaus, their financial institutions, the, you know, the, in some cases, big box vendors, like, you know, Best Buy and things like calling people like that and saying, you know, like, Hey, this isn't, this is a fraudulent, you know, scenario. So we, you know, those are things that we, that we're excited about helping with. Do you see more uh, criminal organizations uh, getting more sophisticated in terms of merging data we, we got a little bit of data from here, a little bit of data from here, a little bit of data from there, yeah, where okay. alone they're not particularly uh, personally identifiable or they're, they're not particularly alarming. But once you start patching them all together, you, you've got something. Yeah, and we talked a little bit about the security questions. That's another big one, right? You know, making sure that people are using different security questions on different sites. So, so again, so you, you've got somebody who's got a, uh, a phishing email that's going around that says, you know, hey, you know, your buddy wants you to fill out some information on a survey and then that you know clicks in and suddenly they're in your instagram account and from there they've got access to these three questions then they take those three questions and they merge them with some other information that maybe they've got from you know that they're able to do a merge on through some older dark website that gets an email address and gets some other information maybe pulls in a uh, you know a parent's maiden name and then they're on the phone you know again redirecting sims so yeah it's absolutely the case where there's where there's scenarios where, where these ki kinds of mergers of different information sources are proving viable and and really the 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 fact that it's so easy for us to to go out and do these dark web scans and tell you you know hey you your name email address address you know these things are all out there they're being handed around on lists right now um so it's if it's that easy for us to be able to kind of go out and, and, and spot these things, it's really easy for uh, other organizations to, to go out there and do that. And, and things like, you know, you've got, um, um, you know, organizations that have sprung up that are, that are kind of a uh, customer service, if you will, for people who are, are running larger scale, you know, um, phishing attempts or running larger scale, you know, scams across broader, broader audiences. And we'll do things like, you know, try to arrange 
you know, extortion payments through through a you know this sort of, sort of third party entity that acts like a like a uh, a malware or a um, you know or a ransomware type of event. So yeah, there's 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 absolutely coordination going on. There's absolutely like little weird cottage industries springing up to service you know uh, folks who have been <laughs> exploited and the folks who are exploiting them. So it's, it's, a, it's an interesting space. Criminal syndicates as a service. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. The NSA just shut down a big one a while back. So it, that was uh, involved in some ransomware uh, activities and they, they shut down the middle, that middleware, you know, company that was like arranging Bitcoin pay- payments out to the actual exploit, you know, um, you know, syndicate, if you will. So it's, it's, it's a fascinating space. It's like, it's kind of terrifying to watch it all go down and, and, and knowing that, you know, the, the, that, you know, everyone's getting targeted, everyone, yeah. you know, your, that your age doesn't matter, whether or not you're a private citizen or a company, whether you're part of, you know, utility grid or whether or not you're a part of a bank or, you know, it's like um, all these, everyone's getting targeted and the, the methods are getting more sophisticated. And I think that's hard for some people to like some people who have, who've contacted me about, Hey, I think I, you know, so-and-so is trying to grab my identity. They're trying to hack me, whatever. Um, they're very much think it's about them in the terms of like someone is intentionally targeting, uh, you know, uh, someone's intentionally targeting Patrick yeah. uh, where it's, I'm pretty sure they're targeting everybody. It's just Patrick happened to be the yeah. one who picked up the phone or answered yeah. the yeah. Or, or read the email. And so it appears like they're targeting us individually, but they're just going after everybody. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I had, I, uh, I got a, a call from my wife that she had an email out that, you know, there's a new recurring charge that was going to get re-upped for $400 for some antivirus mal- malware provider from Best Buy. And so I'm like, that can't be right. She's, and I'm busy and she's running around. And so she's forwarding these, this thing off. And um, she gets me on the phone with the, the person that she called from the email. And he's telling me, he's like, yeah, I just need you to download this. Uh, I'm going to take you this. I'm like, why am I going to remote control software? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, so then I'm just talking because now I'm curious what, like, how the script's going to go. Okay. Yeah, I've got that downloaded. Now what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my wife and I kind of have this game. And, and, and just before we started recording, she's like, oh, hey, honey, I, I, I got an email saying I need to uh, reset the password to my PayPal account. She's yeah. like, um, I don't have a PayPal account. What should I do? <laughs> yeah. Definitely uh, do not click through. Yeah. <laughs> and my, like, absolutely click on the link and then yeah. tell them, hey, I've already gotten locked out of my account. What do I do? <laughs> yeah. And I, uh, uh, a friend of mine's mother had a hacker call them up uh, and was, again, following the script, trying to get her to download software onto her computer. Um, and she's not very computer savvy. So they spent about two and a half hours before they finally oh. gave up because she couldn't get the software installed. And I was just thinking that's one of the few times where you almost kind of feel sorry for the guy at that point. He put in his time and he, he didn't walk away with anything through no fault of his own. It, it, it's one of those times where it was advantageous that the person was not was not, savvy, was, right? was not <laughs> mediocrely uh, computer savvy. Indeed, indeed. Because that kind of is their target audience. They don't want people so non-computer savvy that they... They can't yeah, install something, but Indeed. they don't want someone computer savvy enough to know. Right. Well, to, to get a re- refund on your credit card, you, they don't need access to your computer. You don't need to download any software. Yeah, that's right. So, so earlier we talked about um, like different answers to security questions. And it makes me think, so what are, I, I could think of a bunch of them, but what are some of the things that we should be doing to reduce the the potential risk for identity theft. I don't think that there's anything that we can do to entirely prevent people from trying, yeah. but what are the things that we should be using to, to doing to at least try to reduce the likelihood? And obviously yeah, you're sure. talking about different answers to different security questions. Right. Uh, uh, try not to answer online quizzes <laughs> <laughs> on Facebook. Here's another great, whenever I see those go by, I'm, I'm always like, uh, you know, they're always like, you know, hey, what's what what sign are you? You know, what 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 you know, what you what what month were you born in? If you were born in this month, you know, put your date in. And, and I was like, hey, what are the last four digits of your social security <laughs> number? Like, you know, there people will will get in a comfort zone and start handing out information online pretty quickly. 
So I think that's something to be very careful of. And I, I think, um, but when you do have scenarios where you want recovery questions and you want security answers that, that you can use, you, you wanna use different ones on different sites. So you wanna have a scenario where it's like, you know, hey, you're not using your, your, your father's uh, middle name or your mother's maiden name for every single thing that you have out there. Cause once that piece gets out there, then everything is exposed. Well, and, and often, you know, when our parents are older, they may be using their maiden name on their Facebook account. Right. And, right. you know, if I look at, uh, you know, you look at my Facebook account, there's my mom and, and she doesn't use her maiden name on her Facebook account, but I've definitely and, seen that. You don't even have to like figure that out. It's already right. given to you. And social engineering wise, it's one of the easiest things to get out of people, right? You know, you walk down the street and say, hey, I'm from your, just grab somebody off the street and say, hey, I'm from your bank, which mother's maiden name to verify your identity. <laughs> You know, yeah. somebody will probably tell it to you because you're so used to getting those questions asked and you're so used to giving the same answer. So, well, and, and I think people even inadvertently, even aside from the quizzes, gosh, you know, I, I've seen the quizzes, you know, where did you go to, El what was the first school you went to? <laughs> right, what was yeah. the name of your first pet? Yeah. What was your first car? Right, what are the last four digits you yeah. said? Ever? <laughs> What's your home address? <laughs> but those are sometimes things that people share you know, inadvertently outside of the quiz, they're just reminiscing yeah. about their first car. And it's like, oh. oh, no, 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 don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Right. Yeah. You're on, you're on a forum here with like hundreds of people looking at this and it's, and most people aren't, aren't super strict around, you know, locking down, like, you know, who has access to their posts, who can see them. Yeah. So those, those are the kinds of, you're absolutely right. That people, people will routinely and casually hand out very, very sensitive pieces of information without giving it much thought, unfortunately. And, and, that can be, you know, again, combined with other bits of information to, to, to really get, you know, relatively unfettered access to your, your, your identity and use it to, to do all sorts of things. Um, I, I think another one is like, um, um, you know, the, so we talked about security questions. Um, uh, another one is just the obvious one that we all talk about all the time, which is don't click on something that gets texted to you. Don't click on thing, something out of an email. If you yep. get an email from your bank that says click here to change your password, don't click on it. Go to your bank website directly. You know, if someone's asking you to take a quiz, don't click on the link out of the text message if you don't, if the number's coming in from something. You know, just just uh, just distrust every link that's sent to you all the time. It's like a um it, it just needs to get it ingrained into people's bones until we stop sending people links to click on. Yep. Yeah. I know one of the one of the things that I tell people and is uh uh, if you're in the U.S., make sure that you have uh, the U.S. Postal Service informed delivery uh, yes. turned on. And that's where yeah. the U.S. Postal Service will scan your mail, <laughs> the outside of it, not the inside, yeah. uh, and on a daily basis tell you what's getting delivered. And yeah. I've heard of scammers like setting that up for houses that they're targeting yeah. so that they can get they get the list of what's being delivered that way they know the day to go in to steal the credit card offer or the, the billing statements yeah and if you and yeah, you know, it's one of the reasons that you know our our company and some others do also um you know provide the ncoa the international change of address lists out as well so that we can give you an alert if someone's trying to change your address it's like it's it's one of those things that's that's relatively easy to do without causing any undue attention is to you know change some change you know, put a change of address in for, you know, Patrick, hey, I'm, I used to use, live at this address, now I live at this address. Now all the credit cards are, are you know, over there. It's it's super easy to do. These things get done in, in, in bulk, you know, by, you know, again, by groups that are just seeing what they can do to try to change these things and get, get something out to there. You know, and the, the boxes get shut down and all that stuff, but it, it's um, it's just a cyclic pattern of, of you know, um, of one particular attack, you know, profile or vector. Yep. So once someone has uh, collected the personally identifiable information from us, whether they've gone on the dark web, they've dumpster, dumpster dive through our, our trash. And great one. Yeah. <laughs> Shredders are really important. You know, don't throw out your, if people just take the credit card offer, you know, without even opening it and huck it into the, the trash. And, and that's a great way for someone to go get, you know, go get a really nice credit card offer. <laughs> yep. I, I'm a big fan of shredding anything that has the name of a business, name of a company that I do business with yeah. or my name on it. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> Which means I pretty much shred everything that comes in. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a good, it's a good practice. 
<laughs> so, 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 so once someone has gotten that personal identifiable information, name, address, phone number, maybe they've gotten our social security number, uh, mother's maiden name, what can they do with that information? Well, um, like I said, there's, there's, there's a number of different paths they can take with that. There's, you know, with, with just a few pieces of those information, we can open a credit card in your name. We can, we can go out and obtain a loan in your name. We can, you know, um, you know, if you have a, if you can guess at a couple of security questions and have a little bit of address or personal information, there's the SIM swap thing, you know, where, you know, again, we can, we can get access to your cell phone authenticate, your text message authentications. Um, there's, um, you know, Carlo, I mean, there's the, the reason that we, that we, that most people in this industry look at, you know, credit alerts and credit scores as a means of doing this, because the time it, people's information is floating around in giant buckets of, of information from, you know, the, the big Yahoo hikes of, you know, of the early 2000s to, um, the, you know, the credit bureau itself, you know, they're going to experience got, you know, yeah. had, a, had a, a data dump. Other folks have had, uh, you know, again, published and unpublished. There are, your information is probably out there. It's probably sitting in a list somewhere. It's probably getting handed around. It's probably getting resold. But when we say we're preventing it, what we're really doing is we're making sure that you know the minute someone tries to do something with that information, that's the key bit. And that's, that's, that's the point at which your information being out there actually means something and is actually dangerous to you, to you in terms of your, your, your time, your finances, your reputation, all those types of things can be, can be hijacked. So um, in, in a number of ways, creating Facebook pro profiles as a means to go and do social engineering on your friends, um, creating um, uh, Instagram profiles to go out and, 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 and do, you know, the, the one I was just uh, um, seeing the other day was, was one where, where people get access to one person's Instagram account, do a slight rename on it, start messaging all their friends, you know, something I was hinting at earlier where someone says, hey, I, I'm, I need to, I want you to answer a survey about me. I'm going to send you a text message in a few minutes. And so then through you get that through your Instagram messenger. And then a few minutes later, you see a text message, but it's not from your friend. It's just from some like, oh, okay, there's my, there's my survey link. And you go click it. And then your Instagram prof profile is compromised. And wow. then you, now the, the jumping off point for the next set of compromises. And again, you've got security questions. You've got other things that can be then used and, and collated with other bits of information. Yeah, there's there's so many different ways that somebody can take minimal amounts of information and gain access to credit, to cash, to phones, to cars, to loans, to all sorts of things that that can be done in your name. And and sometimes it's even just reputational. Like you know, once you if you're a uh, if you're a media personality and you have a you're someone compromises your oh um, what's his name uh, CEO of Twitter you know he had it he yep, got Dorsey swap. Dorsey yep. got some swap. And somebody got, and they they basically got into his Twitter account using his his uh, two factor authentication on his SIM and started posting just the most vile, racist, and misogynist stuff on there. Um, and you know, there's a lot of reputational damage that comes as associated with that. It wasn't financial, but it's 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 also harmful. Yep. Yeah. And so, how on 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 my own, how hard is it to unravel identity theft damage? I know I was, I was telling you before we, we started recording that a relative of mine uh, yeah. was a, a victim of identity theft. Uh, this is probably 25 years ago now, and it took years and lawyers to to, yeah. to, to unravel each you know, each element of it took years to unravel. Yeah. How, how much of a hassle is it? How much time does it take to unravel these sort of things? It takes a, it takes a lot of time. So the, the, you know, you know, again, if you think about it, once this has happened, again, you want to not just be mindful of the specific exposure that you've noticed. You want to assume that all your other things are compromised as well. So you want to um, immediately lock down all your banking cards. You want to, you know, freeze your credit. Once you freeze your credit, you're, you've got a problem there because once your credit's frozen, you know, you can't open up a new line of credit. You can't get a new cell phone. You probably can't upgrade your cell phone. You know, anything that's going to go off and do a, you know, even a soft credit poll is going to fail. Um, so while you've got your credit frozen, while you're trying to keep this exposure from happening, you're, you're shut out. So um, then you want to go to all your financial institutions, your banks, your credit cards, um, your retirement savings accounts. You want to change all your passwords. 
You want to change your usernames if you have access to a username that's not your email address. You want to change your security questions. You want to go through all these things. Uh, uh, you know, recovering from a SIM swap. You know, uh, I, that's at the front of my mind because, as I mentioned, a, a relative of mine recently was a victim of that. We spent two days just getting the phone number reassigned to the the SIM reassigned to his card to his. Mm -hmm. phone. So, and that's the very first thing that we needed to do in order to start recovering from the the theft of that identity and the, and, and the exploitation of a couple of his financial accounts. So once, you know, we, depending on what's been, what's been done, uh, if you're doing it on your own, you're looking, you can be looking at a lot of time to get everything unwound. And, and it's difficult on your own to think of every single thing out there that you might want to go through. So we, we have, and not, not just us, and there's other folks in our space have, have again, you know, credit bureau certified credit recovery specialists. Their job is to be trained to, to help you think through these things, identify what kind of next steps need to get taken, help you, you know, through, you know, um, like I said, a lot of, you know, we have, we have a million dollar policy for, for helping people recover cost wise from this sort of thing. If there's attorneys needed, if there's other fees needed um, that, that to come back from this, if you're looking at, you can be looking at weeks, you can be looking at months, depending on, how, on, on what specific things have, have been done. And these things can happen so fast. And, you know, and, and during that time, you may not have access to you can be credit out. cards, bank, bank accounts. accounts. Yeah. And you're and with your credit frozen, you can't get new ones. So you're you're the things that you want to do to, to stop the bleeding will will leave you a little shy on cash and credit in the short term. So hopefully you've got some folks around you that can help you through that. So it's it, it can be challenging to to do that to recover that from that on your own. And and like I said, that's assuming from the beginning that you that you were alerted in a reasonable amount of time that this was happening and that you responded in a way that was, you know, uh, swift and, and, and efficient in terms of uh, doing things in the right order that would help you lock them down. Like, you know, again, start off with your financial institutions, lock everything down there, lock your cards down, start then, then go into a credit freeze. Then, then you start to go and try to recover all your accounts. So if you, if you leave one of those open and you don't get to it fast enough, be able to do a lot of damage in a very short amount of time. And I assume it's just as difficult if someone has taken out loans, credit cards, the, the process of trying to convince those entities, no, I'm actually, a, it wasn't me. I'm, an, I'm a victim of identity theft. What department do I talk to? What information do I need to provide right. them? Yeah. And they're going to be looking at you like, you know, because there, there are people who go and try to get out of loans and try to get out of, you know, phone purchases and try to get out of auto loans. And set you with the same sort of thing. So they're going to want to, hey, you, we sent you a multi-factor authentication. You responded. We sent you this kind of confirmation to your email and you responded. So this was you. And you're like, well, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's, it can take some time and it can take some, some support. Yeah, I assume that's you know, where, where you and your competitors come in is that the know-how of who to contact, where to contact, what the processes are, and it's and it's your time as opposed to my time. Absolutely, yeah. And, and time is a big factor of it too. Even if even if you manage, or if you're lucky enough to get off without without much financial exposure, just the amount of time it's going to take out of your life to, to get back onto onto stable ground. Like I mentioned, helping my helping my own relative, you know, took two days just to get the phone number back, you know, uh, and and prevent further damage. And then we had to go back through and do all the other items to to recover. So. It is a challenge. It is a time suck. It's a financial expense. It's a reputational problem. Like all, all these things are, 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 you know, it's why we're here, why we're in this business. It's, and it's all the heartache and all the emotional drama, the feeling yeah. of, oh yeah, someone's been in my accounts messing yeah. with my stuff. Yeah. What have they, what have they said to my family and friends? What have they done to me financially? What have they, what other things have they gotten into with the, with the bits of information that came from? The things that they were able to get access to, yeah, it's it's, uh, and like I said, just go it it once they're in, they they go they'll go through things fast. I mean, that's uh, it's going to be a challenge trying to figure out if they've used your identity to create non-credit profiles out there, right? You know, opening up social media accounts using your credentials and names and information it may be a while before you notice that sort of stuff surface indeed and um you know again creating new mechanisms to authenticate themselves outside of the ones that are the your your normal ones is another you know 
another way to kind of protect, to lock the back door once you've snuck in, you know, uh, so that, you know, um, and, and the, the SIM swap's a great example of that, like once they're in on that, it's, you know, they've got your preferred authentication method there with, with multi-factor authentication. So, you know, we're, we're putting out, you know, um, you know, stories on our own site that say that, you know, are, are telling people like, it, it's time to move into authentication apps and not a text message two-factor authentication request because, you know, it, if you get SIM swap there, if somebody, you know, manages that, at least it's going to your, it's going to your authenticator app. It's not going to your, to just a bit random text message. So there's, there's things that as these things evolve, you, you need somewhere to go to get information like your podcast, yep. <laughs> our blogs, like, and, and, and stories, you, you need to be able to stay on top of these things and make sure that not just you, like for me, it's like, I've got, you know, we all have um, family members, both, you know, um, elderly and young, right. I mean, both of them can be, you know, vulnerable to, to campaigns that are, that are, that are unfamiliar to them, you know, in terms of, you know, uh, SIM swaps or in terms of, you know, fake credit offers in terms of other things that people say, oh, this is great. You know, I've got a, a credit offer here that's going to turn my life around, you know, yeah. it's not a credit offer and, and it's tricking people into giving out the kind of information you would need to get a credit offer, but really you're, you're just handing your information off to somebody, you know, young people get very susceptible to that as they're trying to build their credit and trying to build, build their, you know, their own um, financial, you know, life going forward. It's unfortunately those that are um, most vulnerable and precariously on the edge are uh, the most impacted by identity theft. Right. Yeah. That the, the, their ability to be able to recover and to, yeah, freeze all my accounts. I've got these other accounts that I can, t that I can live off while we sort this out. Right. <laughs> most people don't, <laughs> yeah. most people don't have the buffer to, to live for a few months where something, where their credit gets sorted out. And unfortunately it's, that's just not the case. I, I guess that would be one of the, one of those things that you can do to mitigate the risk is make sure that you have money set aside. Yeah. Not necessarily all in one place. Right. Different parts of the mattress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not just under the mattress, put some in the closet, right. uh, put some in the kitchen, some All in the freezer. That, you know, somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so are there any other, you know, parting wisdom that you want to share before we wrap up today? Uh, yeah, I guess that just following up on that last thing too is 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 that you know you, you not only want to be educated for your own sake and for your spouse's sake, you want to be educated for your parents' sake and you want to be educated for your children's sake. Um, I've got a, a a 21 year old and a 16 year old, so I've got somebody who's brand new to, to the credit world, and I've got somebody who's about to enter into it. Um, I've got elderly parents. My wife's got elderly parents, so we we've got scenarios there where where we've got folks who are for at risk, we want to be educated to make sure that we're helping them and that we're able to provide them with some level of protection too, whether that's through a family plan, through something that, like the like what we offer, or whether or not it's getting in their own account, or or through what are some some of the things our our competitors are offering as well. But but it, you, you want to make sure that you you know you want to put your own mask on first on the plane, yeah. but you want to definitely help <laughs> help the help the little ones out and, and help your parents out um, and any other relatives you have in your sphere that that you want to make sure are 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 protected from this. Awesome. So how can people find out more about the company and uh, the blog? Sure. Um, identityiq.com is our, our, our website. And, um, you know, we, uh, if you go directly to the www site, you'll, there's, you know, places where you can enroll, but there's also just sort of articles and things that are visible there. Um, uh, that's probably the best place to go and get some information about, about what, what kind of plans we offer, what kind of services we offer, as well as just a sort of a view of, you know, the kinds of things that you're telling your your audience as well. How, how do we, what new things are popping up? How do we protect ourselves from it? How do we recover from it? And what kind of tools do we be looking at to do so? Yeah, that's a, cha that's a challenge. Even if you've listened to the podcast today, yeah. the attack vectors will, will have changed since we recorded this. And there'll be some new threat that you need to be aware of. Indeed. <laughs> Patrick, thank you so much for coming on the Easy Prey podcast today. Great pleasure. Thanks for having me.